Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The Queen of England allows homosexual marriage and immediately a gay couple sues the Church of England to demand God's blessing? The District of Columbia is pushing a transgender agenda and Fuller Seminary starts a gay student club. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. Dr. Chaps, you're watching PIJN News. And on this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. A bill to allow homosexual couples to be legally married in England and Wales passed the House of Commons and was recently approved by Queen Elizabeth II. Now, same-sex marriage is supposedly legal in Great Britain. The Associated Press reports that Queen Elizabeth gave her royal approval of the marriage bill, which also had the support of Prime Minister David Cameron, so-called conservative, and now gay marriage is legal in England. Culture Secretary Maria Miller said, the bill is a clear affirmation that as a nation, respect for each and every person is paramount regardless of age, religion, gender, ethnicity, or now sexual orientation. Homosexual weddings could begin taking place as soon as next summer, reports the Associated Press. Here's a quote from the gay lord, Ali. No, he's not a gay lord, he's actually a member of the House of Lords who happens to be a gay man, so that makes him, I suppose, a gay lord in a certain way. He said, my life and my, the lives of many others are better today than they were yesterday. But in a different interview, that same gay lord, Ali, began attacking the Church of England. He said it's, now our, it's contradictory for the Church of England to uh, deny homosexual wedding ceremonies in their churches at the same time that the state is allowing homosexual marriage because of course, over in England, the, the queen is the head of the church. So the Church of England is actually a government institution. If the government allows it, then the church has to allow it or so goes the argument. Lord Ali said, they argue religious f f liberty except when they don't like it. They don't want gay marriage. There are those who have a deeply held religious view and then there's a second group who probably oppose it now but they will repent later on. So this homosexual man is saying the church needs to repent and the church, some in the church will repent and will approve homosexual marriage at some point. But this gay Lord is not the only one attacking the church of England. While the government now allows homosexual marriage, the Church of England does not give its blessing to homosexual wedding ceremonies because the Bible still teaches that sodomy is a sin. And globally, mostly the African bishops have stopped the Church of England from endorsing homosexual weddings. The Blaze reports that following the Queen's blessing of homosexual marriage, one homosexual couple is either suing or threatening to sue the Church of England to demand the church actually bless their wedding ceremony. Here's a picture of the two men. One is Barry Druitt Barlow, a well-known homosexual advocate, who told the Essex Chronicle that he's planning a court challenge to force the church to perform his homosexual wedding. Barry, who joined in a civil partnership with a man named Tony in 2006, said he's a practicing Christian who is less than content with the church's view. The couple has five children and here's a quote, it's like someone gave me a sweetie with the wrapper on it and they're telling me to suck it. We are happy for gay marriage to be recognized. In that sense, it's a big, it is a big step, but it's actually a small step because it's something we still cannot do. I wanna go into my church and marry my husband, he added. The only way forward for us now is to make a challenge in the courts against the church. That's a quote from mostly the Associated Press and other sources as I cited them. Now, let's ask a theoretical question. Let's suppose he wins his lawsuit. 
let's suppose he gets some liberal judge to force the bishops to do a homosexual wedding ceremony in the Church of England. I don't know if that's possible. I mean, I'm not an expert on British constitutional law, but I would think the church law, since it still forbids the bishops from doing that, would maybe give some religious liberty for the bishops to not participate in that ceremony. But let's imagine the homosexuals win their court case and a liberal judge orders the bishops to perform the wedding ceremony. Will God bless the wedding? Will God bless the marriage? That's what they really want, isn't it? If the, if the bishops themselves were homosexual and they, and they wanted to do this wedding, they could not obtain the blessing of Almighty God. And then what are they gonna do? They're gonna file a lawsuit against Almighty God? What if you had a judge, let's say they win that lawsuit and the, the earthly judge, the liberal judge, orders Almighty God, God, you must blame, you must bless this homosexual wedding ceremony. Do you think God would not just laugh at that order? God is going to withhold his blessing from sodomy because God has defined that as sin. In fact, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 19, verses four through six, Jesus said marriage as from the beginning, quoting Genesis three, quoting Moses, quoting Adam and Eve, right? The earliest humans, the, the first marriage as God defined it. And Jesus quoted in Matthew 19, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they're no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. My contention is that even if the judge ordered Jesus Christ himself to repent, Jesus would not repent. Jesus will come back and rule. In fact, he'll strike down the judge, he'll strike down the law in Britain, he'll strike down the sodomites and throw them into hell. Let's pray about this. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that people would repent of this sin, that the government would repent, that the queen would repent, that the bishops would resist, and that God, you will pour out your blessing on even these homosexual couples who are confused. God created them to be male and female, created them to be heterosexual. God protect their children from the abuse that's happening in their home but Father, cause them to repent so they can be saved, so they can go to heaven and obtain the full blessing of God. They want God's blessing, but what they must do to obtain it is repent. Father, we pray you will give them that blessing upon that repentance. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, the District of Columbia is pushing the transgender agenda. Fighting the culture war between church and state, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about your family, about your children? Of course you do, but you need to take action today because they're under attack. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org to protect traditional marriage. Here are three specific petitions you can sign. Number one is to stop ENDA. This is the so-called Employment Non-Discrimination Act, but it's actually a bathroom bill that will punish Christians. It's introduced by a homosexual congressman, Jared Polis from Colorado, and it's really just a bathroom bill in disguise. Ladies and little girls, next time you go into the ladies' room at any public restaurant, you might run into somebody who looks like this if ENDA becomes law. We need to stop this because here's the actual, actual language of the bill. They don't want you to read this. It says dresser grooming standards must be permitted for any employer who has an employee who's undergoing or may someday go undergo a gender transition after the time of employment. Well, this gives them permission to have the same dress or grooming standards to which they're transitioning. In other words, they don't even need a sex change. A man can go into a lady's room and assault you and your little girl if ENDA becomes law. And they'll punish the Christian business owner if he doesn't allow that. Number two petition you can sign is to stop the Homosexual Classrooms Act. That's being introduced by Senator Al Franken of Minnesota, actually to defund your public school if you don't force the teachers to promote homosexuality to all of the children as, as young as kindergarten in the guise of anti-bullying lectures. 
you're really just recruiting your kids into the gay agenda. Petition number three you can sign at PrayInJesusName.org is to defend traditional marriage. The 1996 Defense of Marriage Act is under fire, but it defines marriage simply between one man and one woman. Sign these petitions today. Go to PrayInJesusName.org and take action. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from the Task Force blog, who reports the Washington DC City Council has passed a bill designed to allow transgender legal name change and updating gender markers on birth certificates. In other words, you're born a girl, you wanna become a boy, you change the birth certificate to say you were actually born as a girl, when historically that's untrue, it's deceptive. They're rewriting what God made them when they came out of the womb. Not just my opinion, but let's continue the story. The bill, which passed unanimously, makes it safer and easier for transgender people to get their legal documents in line with their chosen identity. The new law has two major elements. The first will allow the city to issue an updated birth certificate after receiving a statement from a licensed healthcare provider stating that the individual has received appropriate treatment for gender transition. Well, what does appropriate treatment mean now? Well, it's different than what it used to mean. The old rule required they actually have to have proof of a surgical procedure and a court order, which is hard for some people who don't have a lot of money, they can't afford that surgery. So now they made it easier. Now all you have to do is get someone to say, well, we gave them appropriate treatment and now it's all hocus pocus, uh, boom, the boy's a girl. When actually anatomically, they're still their birth gender. The law now eliminates the expensive publication requirement that used to require people to seek a name change to publish it in the newspaper for three consecutive weeks. This requirement risked outing transgender people, opening them to discrimination. In addition, the bill allows people living in DC to go to court for an updated birth certificate and gender change if required by their home state. So now DC is actually changing the birth certificates in Texas, or so they're facilitating that or trying to help people do that. Here's some statistics from the source that I cited, 24% of transgender respondents, when they're polled, they said they were able to change their gender marker on their birth certificates. Only 15, 59% said they were able to update their driver's license to turn themselves into a boy or a girl, or a man or a woman, vice versa. Presenting incongruent documents is a serious risk for some uh, transgender people, so they claim. 44% of respondents reported being harassed, assaulted, or asked to leave an establishment when trying to lie on their birth certificate. Because isn't that really what they're doing now? And I saw a, a quote from Pat Robertson this week, uh, the Chancellor of Regent University where I attended, uh, and I would love to live up to his example and his legacy, but I think he got it wrong this week when he said there's no sin associated with gender reassignment surgery. Well, here's the sin. It's right there in the Bible, right? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Isn't that one of the 10 commandments? If you're gonna go to the driver's license bureau and lie to them, and anatomically you're a man, but you're gonna lie to the person issuing the driver's license and lie to all the police who ever see that driver's license, that you're claiming to be a woman when you're not a woman, isn't that bearing false witness? There is a sin associated with this transgender as Rush Limbaugh jokingly refers to the surgery in adedictomy surgery or redactedictomy surgery. And it contradicts not only thou shalt not bear false witness, but these scriptures from Romans chapter one. Let's read this together. The Bible says, why God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever, amen. 
For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meat. Now let's discern the spirits here. What does it mean when the Bible says you're gonna receive in, the, in yourself the recompense of that error? In other words, when you sin, you receive into yourself the demonic spirit that you cooperated with. And now these demonized people are going around lying to the public and the government of DC says, oh, this is a good idea. You know, most forward thinking law in the nation. And by the way, it's being imposed on other states too. This is an abomination. And I agree with the Bible on this and we need to pray. Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus name that you will stop the deception. We pray against this demonic spirit of lying that is confusing not just the world around us, but confusing the very person who is confused about their gender. Father, we come against that demon of confusion. And we say, if you're a man, you were born a man, act like a man. We pray that blessing, that sanity, that clarity for everyone who's confused about this issue, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Fuller Theological Seminary has now has a gay student club. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about your family, about your children? Of course you do, but you need to take action today because they're under attack. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org to protect traditional marriage. Here are three specific petitions you can sign. Number one is to stop ENDA. This is the so-called Employment Non-Discrimination Act, but it's actually a bathroom bill that will punish Christians. It's introduced by a homosexual congressman, Jared Polis from Colorado, and it's really just a bathroom bill in disguise. Ladies and little girls, next time you go into the ladies' room at any public restaurant, you might run into somebody who looks like this if ENDA becomes law. We need to stop this because here's the actual, actual language of the bill. They don't want you to read this. It says dresser grooming standards must be permitted for any employer who has an employee who's undergoing or may someday go undergo a gender transition after the time of employment. Well, this gives them permission to have the same dress or grooming standards to which they're transitioning. In other words, they don't even need a sex change. A man can go into a ladies room and assault you and your little girl if ENDA becomes law. And they'll punish the Christian business owner if he doesn't allow that. Number two petition you can sign is to stop the Homosexual Classrooms Act. That's being introduced by Senator Al Franken of Minnesota, actually to defund your public school if you don't force the teachers to promote homosexuality to all of the children as, as young as kindergarten in the guise of anti-bullying lectures. You're really just recruiting your kids into the gay agenda. Petition number three you can sign at PrayInJesusName.org is to defend traditional marriage. The 1996 Defense of Marriage Act is under fire, but it defines marriage simply between one man and one woman. Sign these petitions today. Go to PrayInJesusName.org and take action. God bless you in Jesus' name. Our next story comes from Charisma News, who reports Fuller Theological Seminary in California, the Evangelical School, has now approved an official student organization for homosexual seminary students. The decision sparked debate in the larger world of Christian colleges. Although other Christian schools have approved similar organizations, Fuller is the first evangelical seminary to do so. The group is called One Table. It was formed last fall and attracted about three dozen students so far, which makes me suspect personally if they should be kicked out of seminary. But they, here's a quote from Peter Spragan. We have a picture of the Family Research Council vice president here. Fuller is not acting in the student's best interest by sanctioning the group. And they should instead be teaching reorientation as the student's best option. Sprigg is also an ordained Baptist minister. But 
the homosexual group's founder, Nick Palacios, and we have a picture here of Nick Palacios, said he's hoping that people will see Fuller and One Table as a model of what the body of church is supposed to do in this situation. Really? Is this what they're supposed to do? Retrain seminary students, including some Christian seminary students, that sin is not a sin, that this should be normalized. No, sir, you are a wolf in sheep's clothing. What do I mean when I say a wolf in sheep's clothing? I mean, someone who claims to be a man of God and uh, Nick Palacios, leading this openly homosexual group at a Christian evangelical seminary, is now pretending that he's a pastor, right? Pretending that he's a prophet. He's called to the ministry. He's a religious guy. He's gonna have open dialogue about these things. And yet he's going to endorse sin as a good thing. Well, that harms the people. That actually, now the, the teeth come out, right? And you see that demonic spirit inside the false prophet who is chewing and biting the sheep and leading them into destruction and harm and sin. And God calls people like that false prophets, especially in Jeremiah chapter six. From the prophet, even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. They have healed the brokenness of my people or dressed their wounds superficially saying, peace, peace, but there is no peace. In other words, they're saying, you're saved, you're saved, peace with God, God will, God will bless you, but God does not bless you. You're not at peace with God. You're the enemy of God until you repent, and then you can have peace with God. What the false prophets are saying is, you can have peace with God without any repentance. You can have sin and war against God and somehow have peace with God while you're warring against God. No, that's confusion. Jeremiah continues, were they ashamed because of the abomination they have done? No, they were not even ashamed at all. They did not even know how to blush. Therefore, they will fall among those who fall. And at that time, I will punish them. They will be cast down, saith the Lord. This is a warning to all you false prophets out there and you seminary students who want to grow up someday to be false prophets. Keep attending groups like One Table. Keep having that dialogue that really is just designed to make people think that sin is not sin. Sure, there needs to be a one-way dialogue here from God to us. Our job is not to redefine morality and right and wrong. Our, do our job is to listen to Almighty God, to agree with the Bible, and to implement His definition of truth. And God bless the pastors who are doing that and fighting against that, but Fuller Seminary, you just lost my donation. And I pray that people will reconsider if you're a donor of Fuller Seminary, that you'll call them this week and ask them to reconsider. Let's pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray that you will defeat the demonic spirit of this wolf inside of the false prophets who are trying to look like sheep. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you will cause the church to repent. If righteousness does not begin in the house of God, then what hope does the world have? God, at least let the church be righteous. Let us repent of our sins. Father, we pray this blessing on Fuller Seminary. Call them back to the godly heritage with which you ordained them from the beginning. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break and we'll preview tomorrow's show. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? 
It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll-free at 866-Obey-God, and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand and for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I wanna thank you personally for standing with us and donating to this Christian ministry. I don't take a dime of salary from donations to our nonprofit, so please visit PrayInJesusName.org. And I want you to consider these two scriptures from 2 Corinthians 8. The Bible says, just as you excel in everything, in faith, speech, knowledge, earnestness, and love, see also that you excel in this grace of giving. And also in 2 Corinthians 9, each man should give what he's decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. On tomorrow's show, we're gonna discuss the NSA and the meeting of several congressmen with President Obama to stop the NSA from spying on Americans. We'll discuss the first Christian hospital, which was rediscovered in Israel over a thousand years old. And we're gonna talk about religious freedom in India, where one of the states has forbid Christian pastors from baptizing converts. We'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.